Dr. Shannon Cox is a board-certified radiation oncologist with Austin Cyberknife, and he is here this morning to tell us a little bit more about Lung Cancer Awareness Month. Good morning, Dr. Good morning. Cox. Good morning. I'm happy to have you here, but unfortunately, it comes at a time where we're talking about something that's a little bit more grave, right? Um, let's talk about the purpose of this month and why we need to raise awareness. Well, lung cancer is actually the most common. Uh, it's more common than combined breast, colon, prostate, uh, colorectal cancer. So it's Are actually, you serious? Yes, one wow. of the most common. And so primarily due to, uh, obviously, smoking, but mm. there are other causes. Actually, in women, women can get a certain type of lung cancer and not smoke. Uh, what? Yeah, which is more common to women, yeah, unfortunately. Oh, man. Okay, so I know that smoking does play a big role. I think that that has been messaged pretty effectively to a lot of us, but I know it doesn't always hinge on the fact that you may or may not be a smoker, Correct. right? Correct, and usually the delay time to get it is anywhere from 10 to 20 years, probably average being 15. I had a patient one time that was 30 that had lung cancer, and I asked him, he started smoking when he was 12. Oh, so. my God. Uh, also, I think the question is out there, because vaping is relatively new, what, yeah. what that might, because we don't know yet. It takes uh, 10 or 15 years to know if it, if it caused it. So, but we don't have that evidence yet, but we wonder, wonder if it could. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's an important time to sort of raise awareness for this. Uh, and let's talk about what lung cancer is specifically, because, you know, how is it triggered? What does it do in your body? And kind of what are the current stats for it? Well, and basically, like any cancer, it's a combination of genetic and environment. Mm -hmm. And the environment is usually inhaling asbestos or smoking, that kind of thing. There are basically two kinds. There's what, one kind that's treated more commonly with chemotherapy, and there's one kind that's treated more with surgery and radiation. Mm -hmm. CyberKnife in particular tr uh, mainly treats the, the early kind that is uh, treated with surgery. So in a, especially in a patient that's older, that's surgery, it's a, it's a big surgery to, to uh, remove a lung cancer. And so especially in the older patient for the early stage, uh, uh, CyberKnife is just as effective for that stage one lung cancer as surgery, actually the latest uh -huh. studies show. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's incredible. But and I, I want to ask you a little bit more about, uh, you know, how CyberKnife can help with treating lung cancer and that sort of thing. But I just wanted to dig into this a little bit further. You know, should, who should be aware of the fact that they might be needing to look for signs of lung cancer, for example? Because if you're saying it's a 15 to 20 year, you know, gap, do we know to be searching right, for Right, well, there are, there are screening now. There is a, a, it's been debated for years if screening helps in lung cancer. But there is a screening scan that can be done for the patient that maybe is a previous smoker, maybe hopefully they've stopped, or if they're still smoking, there is a screening uh, lung cancer CT scan that can be done. So I would say primarily the person that was either a family history or they, uh, or they uh, smoked mm -hmm. or presently smoked mm -hmm. yeah, should talk to their doctor about getting screening. Okay. Because you like to catch it in the early stages. Sure. And what about signs and symptoms? Uh, really, there's not a whole lot. That's the problem with lung cancer. Yeah. It's not a lot until it's unfortunately a little more advanced. Okay. Uh, in the early stages, there are not a lot of signs and symptoms. So okay. could be things like weight loss, coughs, uh, spitting up blood. Those could be. But it's one that you, it's not like a skin cancer where you'd see it or something yeah. on your tongue where you'd see it real early. It's one that's kind of hidden. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so to catch it in its early stages, if you're at risk, you ought to probably go get a, a, a CAT scan. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's important advice. Okay. Let's talk a little bit more now about CyberKnife. What specifically is it and then how it can help treat lung cancer? Well, a CyberKnife is uh, basically a very a robotic, uh, it's a, a linear accelerator put on a robotic arm. Uh, the advantages of, of it, it's non-invasive. Uh, in order to do it, generally we have to put a little BB or we call a marker in there because the, the, the robot has to key on something and that's it. So generally a, a small little marker is put in. It's literally like a BB. Uh, then the treatment is external. It's non-invasive. Uh, right now we're the only one in central, uh, in central Texas that has it. Oh, wow. uh, it's extreme. It's, it's very, very effective for early stage lung cancer, very effective. And, and actually the latest data shows it holds its own with surgery for early stage lung cancer. So if, if somebody's older that maybe wasn't a surgical candidate especially, but even younger, it's a very, very good alternative. So it basically treats from the outside. The patient just lies there. It doesn't hurt. They don't feel anything. Uh, it takes them anywhere from one to five sessions to do it. 
Yeah. That is incredible. Medical advances. I tell you what, you guys over at Austin Cyberknife, you've really got it sorted out. We are so impressed and um, great information, very important information for people during Lung Awareness Month. Absolutely. Lung Cancer yeah. Awareness Month. So, Dr. Cox, thank you so thank much. You. We appreciate it. Austin Cyberknife is located on I-35 near the Dell Seton Medical Center at the University of Texas. Call them, 512-324-8060 or go to austincyberknife.com.